Hey guys, Sid Zacharias here. We are at Pento World Show. I have an exciting video for you today. I'm gonna to share with you a little insight about how to prepare one for the ranch riding. Let's get into the video. So having a relaxed horse always wins. If you show up with a worried horse, you're kind of underfoot already from the get-go. So people ask me like, what do I do the last few days as I prepare one for a show? Is I definitely make sure they're relaxed before we even leave. I'm always aware of my horse's weakness. And what I try to do is, is make sure the day before we show, I try to make that the strongest area possible. So let's say if I can do one and a half plus on one maneuver, well, I'm not gonna go try to, you know, make sure I maintain the one and a half. I'll be okay with the one if that happens by not practicing uh, excessive to make sure I maintain a one and a half. If I'm really, really solid in those strong areas, I don't spend the night before preparing that. I try to find my weakest link and trying to make that my most solid link. So that could be maybe a side pass to the left. You know, I'll make sure that I spend a lot of time engaging, you know, that hip going to the left. So that way tomorrow when I ask for that side pass on the pole, he really powers stronger to the left side pass. Um, you know, maybe another example would be as a downward transition. If he's not really coming to me as I do a downward transition, I might do a lot of, uh, extreme transition or further than I may want. So like a canter to trot, I might do canter to stop. You know, really make sure that, that he's connected out in that pen. And that allows me the next day, that will be solid. If you do your homework, your best odds that horse will connect, uh, increase your chances the most. The goal with this horse was to get her showing and, and walk away being better for the next show. Okay, we have some pretty big shows that we're getting prepared for, even bigger than this one. And I wanted to go out there and have a good experience. And that means not pushing her too far. And that is the extended lope. I knew that my extended lope, I wasn't going to fly around that corner and open her up and try to get me one and a half. I was okay with a zero or maybe in a plus half would have been great. But I knew my weakest link was that, not showing the full extended lope the, to, to when I know what she can do. And then obviously that collection part in that lead change. Um, this mare was her first ranch riding pattern. I think it's important to ride with the horse you have. And I know that for a three-year-old, I wasn't going to try a flying lead change. I got flying lead changes at home, but I wasn't going to do a flying lead change again on her first show on this particular mare. I didn't want her going out here, going into a new facility, people around, the pressure, all that, and then me showing at her max capacity. I want her to kind of, it's okay. Her areas, like an extended trot, I knew those were going to be good. And like I, like I said before, Min mentioned earlier, I'm okay with taking their weak area and just bumping it up a little bit and not trying to just do a 180 and try to show something I don't have at this moment. So, you know, when we do a horse show, there's, uh, you know, there, there's kind of withdrawal and there's deposits. So that makes sense. I'll explain this a little bit is, is typically when you show a horse, you make a withdrawal a little bit on them. And I'm talking about like a bank account, like there's money in the bank, you've been practicing at home, putting lots of deposits in. And then when you go to a horse show, you might withdraw a little money. And, and if, as long as there's plenty of money in the bank account, you don't go bankrupt and you'll have a pretty good run. But if you don't do your homework and, and you go to a show and you make withdrawals on them quickly, you're gonna go bankrupt. So that sets myself up on this three-year-old that I'm riding. There's not a lot of money in the bank. So I wanna make sure that if I was going to make a withdrawal on her first show, it was gonna be little. If anything, maybe at the level I rode her at, I was able to put some money in. But I knew it wasn't trying to you know, go out there and just lay down the biggest run I've ever done on a three-year-old on her first show. So uh, I think that's important to remember is, is whenever you are at home, expect literally 70% of what you're gonna get on a show, especially on a three-year-old. If you get 50%, you're doing pretty good. A lot of times at these shows, there'll be several classes to, to win the overall high point. You have to do a reining, ranch rail, ranch riding, ranch trail, um, et cetera. So, what that means is you know, a lot of people ask, well, how do you get ready for four or five classes? Is I don't think about raining on day three when I'm riding trail on day one, okay? I ride each class and then I each pattern and then I go on to the next, okay? I think it's really important for people that are always you know, projecting the next pattern and you need to be preparing just one, the class you're riding the next day. Um, and, and don't cross and, and don't mix it up and intermingle. Keep your horse relaxed as possible for that particular pattern, get through it. Then I'll train the next pattern the night before again, 
A lot of times these are, you know, a couple days apart. Sometimes it's all done in one weekend. It doesn't matter. Same thing applies. If I have to run all five patterns in one day, it still applies. Right, each pattern, then train for the next pattern. Do not train for all five patterns um, in advance, back to back. So pattern eight, in my opinion, is a little harder than, and, than other patterns for sure. There's a lot of transitions in a short amount of time. That extended lope is, is it looks like on the paper, it's really drawn as a Z and you got all this time. Uh, you know, and I give you anybody that advice is things come up a lot quicker when you're actually showing the pattern than in the walkthrough or whenever you're looking at it from a pattern point of view, you're like, oh, we got time. That's a really tough pattern and there's a lot of transitions that happen very quick. And I will say when you're looking at the pattern, pattern eight don't look that hard, um, but it's a little hard and it looks. And that extended lope on that, on that corner, hitting that diagonal and then, you know, making that transition and then that lead change part, that, that's a little challenging. So Gigi is a three-year-old. She's a uh, gunner Tinseltown. She's very powerful in the hind end. So it's probably one of our biggest qualities is when we're doing extended trot, you can really see the power in the hind end. And whether it's a spin, whether it's a lope off, whether it's an extended trot, and especially her extended walk, she can really kind of strut around and it gives that real free open ranch look. So when you get a horse that is more powerful, you know, or a horse has a strong area, definitely show it off. Don't hesitate. Don't so kind of what I was going with earlier was, you know, the strong points I knew I didn't have to train for. I knew they were already there. I knew that those areas that extended trot, um, her extended walk, you know, her spins were amazing, I thought, for a three-year-old. My point saying all that is, is those areas I was going to max out what I had because for her it's no stress, not hard for her, it was easy, it was good. Her weak areas, her areas that she was nervous about, a little bit intimidate, a little bit of confidence lacking. Those are the areas I think it's very important to talk about is don't overshow those areas. Just get a good solid run, just three, build, and move up from there. Don't take those areas and really push them and blow them up just because you're trying to win the gold buckle for the weekend. Think bigger. And, and those areas that are strong will always stay strong. It's who they are. Usually that horse play off of it. Those strong areas you normally don't have to drill and work and create anxiety about or perhaps you know, making her work harder in a new atmosphere than she's uncomfortable with. So definitely the areas that are really strong, show them. So in the ranch riding, you know, a lot of, a lot of judges and, a, and what we want to see is a horse moving forward and free and not, not restricted. So we don't want to have that, those gates kind of suck back and barely kind of moving along. We want to have strong impulsion. We want to have the horse kind of hanging out there a little bit. And that means moving forward with good rhythm. I think one of the most important things too, that along with that in the ranch riding is make sure your transitions are very obvious. Um, you know, make sure you hit your points. And you know, again, a lot of people, they're not precise about their transitions. Like when it says trot and you're loping, trot, right on the money, trot. But yet we're not looking for abruptness, smoothness, but really making the move with your uh, transitions, I think is super important. And a lot of people, they just kind of dribble through it. So they'll be cantering and then they'll be kind of trotting for a second and then they'll be going to a walk. Well, they're not gonna score as good as the guy that goes down there and asks from canter to walk and he just goes right into it, canter to walk and it's smooth. So uh, remember that is nailing your transitions where they're supposed to be in that arena and make them very precise of when you want them. Because in ranch riding, you know, some of the, like dressage, we have cones, we have letters that tell us exactly at that cone you need to transition. Well, a lot of times in ranch riding, you can do two or three or four strides sometimes, depending on how size your arena, that is technically a still range of area that is correct. So I think it's very important to re realize be precise, show that judge when I asked it happened now, it didn't happen around the corner where it would kind of a dribble, dribble effect. You wanna keep it very precise. So it shows that judge, hey, you recognize where that spot was. And it happened exactly when you asked and not this delayed reaction. So Gigi here is a three-year-old. We're preparing for the ranch riding fraternity here in August. So everything around this weekend was, was geared towards making her more confident and getting her prepared for the fraternity. Uh, the ranch riding for charity here in August. So with that being said, we walked away with, with a reserve world champion title for our first ranch riding show. Super happy about that, super excited. And there's a lot more, there's a lot more horse there and I just wanted to keep her calm and relaxed and it just happened to be enough. So my goal was never to, you know, get eagle driven and try to make that horse more than what it was. Like we had a good go and that happened to be enough to win a world title 
a reserve champion world title, but I was not going to sacrifice you know, the horse for my ego of trying to ride more than I had. And I, and I feel like walking away from the show should be much better for, you know, August coming up. Um, this was definitely a good confident run for her, confident boost. And for her and I both, at this point, we're two months away, we want to know what we have, you know, and I feel like, hey, she's stepping up, she's coming along, uh, couldn't be more proud of her. I hope these tips and insight may help you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. See you next time.